Welcome to Education Today, the Issues and the Experts. I'm Debbie Mercer and I serve as Dean of the College of Education here at K-State. And we're pleased and so honored to have Randy Watson, Commissioner of Education, with us today. So the purpose of this web series is to open dialogue about the challenges and triumphs in education. And if recent media coverage is any indication, we have quite a few topics in which we can cover. So that's why we're especially grateful, Randy, that you were willing to take some time out of your busy schedule and, and visit with us today. So welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Honored to be back at Kansas State. Uh, it's like coming home. So It, it is. A, a three-time homecoming, a right? A three-time homecoming. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. as, Saying as we as we walked in, uh, Bluemont Hall's changed a little bit <laughs> since last I ventured through the hallways. Well, very good. We're we're very proud that you're an alum of of the college and of of K State. So as you as you um, take on the role of commissioner, creating a vision, developing um, our our forward thinking, what's important to you as you think ahead? You know, Debbie. I, I kind of, I'm looking back first, I'm mm -hmm. looking back to Kansas roots, and Kansas has always been kind of a populist state, really forward thinking, you know, women had the right to vote in Kansas long before uh, other states, mm -hmm. we, we uh, were, as you know, a, a free state, and so I, when you look at that populist movement, I thought, let's go out and let's find out from Kansans what they want in a education system. Because as No Child Left Behind is in its waning days and months, we're going to get the opportunity to design something in Kansas. And with that opportunity comes responsibility. And for a long time, we were operating under really a, a federal mandates. Mm -hmm. And so this is going to give us an opportunity to build it the way Kansans want us to build it. Mm -hmm. So talk about that listening tour. I had the opportunity to, to be involved in that, but I think that was a very powerful way to start. We went to 20 different communities, and then we turned around and went to seven different communities uh, focusing on business. We went to Chamber of Commerce. And we asked three simple questions, but really the most powerful, what are the skills, characteristics, attributes of a successful 24-year-old Kansan? Thinking uh, that would be about the time they're done with formal education. And Kansas State University, proud of this, is helping us with that data collection. Uh, well over 2,000 responses, either in person or online. Uh, and as we look at that data, interesting uh, some, what some of the results are. Kansas are telling us that non-academic skills, and we, we characterize that as soft skills, employability skills, 21st century skills, but Kansas are telling us those are as important, if not more important, to that future success than the academics and then, would you, so why don't you build a system that puts those in balance? Mm -hmm. uh, I think what Kansas has said is, yes, math, reading, science, well, so important, but we got out of balance a little bit. We neglected some of the other things in a pursuit of a test score. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I see impacts on how we accredit schools based on that, and then how we train teachers. So address those two, yeah. two areas. I, I, of course, in those two areas are major functions of the, of the State Department mm -hmm. of Education, the licensure of teachers and the accreditation of schools. Uh, and so one of the challenges, I think, uh, when you come, uh, as I did from a superintendency for school district, is understanding uh, how state agency operates versus um, a school district, because they're much different. Uh, probably like a school district to a university in some sense. Uh, so we have, to, we have to get the vision right. We have to know where are we going for the long term. From there, we can start to develop the indicators that will lead to accreditation. And then we can start saying, now, what, do we have, what skills and, and techniques and attributes do we have to do with teachers? Because when we get into this down to that level, Debbie, we're really going to be talking about the redesigning of schools in order to achieve those outcomes. There's no doubt about it. And you mentioned uh, this morning, we, we have a teacher shortage in Kansas and across the United States. It's not going to diminish over the next several years. And so uh, there's a lot of people with ideas of how we do that differently, but we're gonna have to take a look at how do we get to higher outcomes at probably a lower cost? Uh, and then what, is the, what impact does that have to a teacher who's at Kansas State or elsewhere 
and is thinking about going into the profession and what kind of training do they need to, to have. So we're probably a year away from having that uh, on the licensure side conversation uh, in depth because we, we've got the visions going to be happening throughout this fall. We hope to move that toward talk of a school finance formula that will impact that. Uh, then, we're get, well, then we'll move to accreditation. How does that impact the accreditation of schools? So definitely school finance has been a big issue mm -hmm. in, in Kansas for, for several years. What are the stressors and what are the impacts as we move forward thinking about a school finance formula model that makes sense for Kansas schools? Well, I think uh, for the people, I think many people are saying under the current, the old formula, we can't sustain that over the long period of time because of really not a, a state that's growing fast in population. And as, as you know, our, the western half of our state is decreasing in population, especially along mm -hmm. Highway 36. So how do we, how do we handle the, uh, those things? Kansas, as sparsely populated as we are relative to other states, is extremely diverse from really urban metro areas to uh, small populations where you're, no, there's no other school dis district around you nor other opportunities. So that's the challenge in a new formula. And how do you do that with probably, I think what the legislature wants is some sense of stability from year to year so that we don't get surprises of two million to $50 million or maybe greater in that formula. So I think we'll get there. I think it'll be difficult. It was in 92, it was before that. But before we go there, what is it that we want to do in schools and what does that cost us? You know, uh, how, does, how is that going to look? And I think that, that that's why we're trying to do this visioning part first. So we need to collect that data and evidence before we come up with a solution. Yes, yeah. at least I think so. Yes, very good. Talk a little bit about teacher recruitment and retention. So teacher shortages, teacher vacancies um, is, is an issue we're trying to get our hands around. I think we probably need more data than we have right now to be able to really pinpoint what, what those issues really are. But as we're thinking about high school students, middle school students, even elementary students, and planting those seeds of being, being a teacher, the recruitment side is one, one issue. And the retention side is is another set of complex issues for us to consider. So what are your thoughts as you look forward to the next teaching population? I, I want to clear up one myth that's kind of going around that Kansas teachers are leaving to go to Missouri. Uh, that's it's really not true. We actually mm -hmm. brought more Missouri teachers to Kansas this year than yeah. left to go to Missouri. Uh, but there's some billboards out recruiting our fine teachers mm -hmm. to go to Missouri. I think that kind of spurred some of that. Um, I, th I think what, what when you go into this profession, what all of us wanted was acknowledgement that we're doing work that is, is generational, that we're impacting generations. I don't think any teacher went into this saying, how much money am I going to make? Now, I think every teacher would like to make a living that, uh, that moves them into the middle class. But what they, where money comes in, I think, to most teachers, uh, certainly for me, is if you don't think that you're respected, you don't think that, you, that, you, that what you do has value, then money starts to become an issue. If you think what I do has value, other people think it has value. And so what I think has happened, uh, inadvertently, is that the money has created for many of us in schools that people don't value us. And I think, I think we need to change that conversation because I think we do value. Uh, and when I talk to people, I think that that's there. So we have challenges with, with finance. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And some districts are, are hurting worse than others because of their ability to have saved money uh, over time. But there's no greater time to be a teacher in Kansas. Uh, and and um, as you know, the, the best part of my life has been social media that has allowed former students now to more easily contact me. Because what every teacher goes into it for is is to see the kids, if you can, you know, if I can call kids that are now in their 50s uh, that I had in school, 
uh, to, to say, hey, I'm getting married, or Here, here's my family. Hey, my kids are going to go to K-State just <laughs> like, you know, we did. Um, you can't put a price on that. That's why all of us went into it. To see, to see them, that's right. And to know, yes, I've been able to provide for my family. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we want that. But you, that's why we did it. And, and I have people working at the State Department that are not educators. And they've come from other agencies, and they say, Randy, you know what makes us different than than uh, Department of Revenue or DMV or wherever? Is you guys really are on a mission. You're passionate about the, what you do. Uh, you know, if we work in another, we, you do things and you like your work. But that's true. We're mission called. And, uh, and I think we need to help teachers understand it's still a really good mission, and we're here to support you doing it. Absolutely. So some specific strategies that you would give to teachers, to parents, to community members to help convey that message of the importance of teaching and the value that they bring to communities. Well, I think for the local communities, continue what you're doing because when I talk to teachers, they, I'll ask this question, do you feel valued in your community? And they'll say yes. Uh, our principals value us, our t uh, the, the parents. Uh, parents are giving records amounts of money, they're doing the bake sales, they're coming to parent-teacher conferences, they're engaging with their kids. And we know parents. some parents have, have struggles, and, uh, and they're so appreciative of the work that teachers are doing. Where they think the disconnect is when, when we get to the state level, and maybe the federal level. And uh, I, I'm, I mean, the State Board of Education and, and uh, the commissioner have your back. You know, well, there's no doubt that we, we know the work that you're doing, and so do a lot of people, and they care deeply about you. And that maybe hasn't been portrayed as much as it should be uh, in the press. And I'm not uh, downgrading the press. It's just how people, I think, have perceived it. And uh, we want what's, what the feeling is at the local level to be at the state level also for teachers. Absolutely. And I think that occurs partly through dialogue and conversation. It does. Yeah, and, and I think um, the hardest thing for us to move forward is, um, and, and really the challenge of leadership at all, at all stages comes down, I think, to two things that are really difficult to do over time, relationships and communication. When you trust someone, then the issues that you face do not seem insurmountable. When you don't trust someone, Every little thing is a problem. And right now, there's a lack of trust. Uh, that comes from a lack of relationships and our ability to sit and talk about uh, where we want to go. I'm finding, as we work with the State Board of Ed and we're working with the legislators, we have so much in common that really I don't think gets reported much. We have probably 85% of the conversations that I have, we have total agreement on. It's the 15% that we disagree on how we're going to get there, and that shouldn't be our focus. If our focus is we have an obligation to the next generation of kids in Kansas, now, how do we do that? And I trust you that you're not going to do something that, that hurts me, you know, uh, because it's all about personal, you know, how we feel about it. Then we can get there. Now, that's never a linear path, as you know, Debbie. That's, that's up and down. But we hope that the trajectory is we're going to build better trust. We're going to build better dialogue so that family can have the difficult conversations going forth and sometimes disagree, but still move the systems forward yeah, in a productive way. Absolutely. And I think a key individual in those systems is the superintendent. And so one place that our organizations have had the opportunity to collaborate is on the Kansas Educational Leadership Institute. So providing those mentoring services to beginning school superintendents. And in fact, today, your State Board of Education is, is here on campus with a very large group of, of leaders to start those dialogues and engage in those. So talk about your beginning as a superintendent and how a mentor would have, have helped or, or supported you and then what you see the role of Kelly is as we move forward. First of all, Kelly is such a, I can't thank Kansas State enough uh, because it's, it's a unique uh, group of organizations that said, let's not compete, let's come together. And then as you know, can't, uh, that was a great idea, and we had great collaboration, and we had no money. And uh, Kansas State really has uh, stepped forward as, a, as part of your mission 
and said, you know, we're going to really take that on. And we so appreciate that because without that, it, it, we just couldn't do it. But I think back uh, to my first teaching job where here are the books, good luck, basically, <laughs> uh, to you become a principal after you become a teacher. Nothing prepares you as you teach or you coach for being a principal. And then as a principal, you think, well, I can be the superintendent. And then you feel, well, nothing really prepared me for that. And so the work that Kelly's doing to provide strategic in-depth mentoring with superintendents and principals is invaluable. To have someone that is going to spend one-on-one -on -one time, plus the professional development activities such as <laughs> what we're doing today, is something that uh, I can't imagine how much that would have sped up my learning of how to do the job better versus, well, let's try it, or what did you know some people I knew just kind of say, well, try this. Uh, you've just really assembled some of the best mentors we have in this state who have hundreds of years, thousands of years probably of experience, <laughs> if we count it all, and who are willing to give back to that and say, you know, let me help you with the first 100 days, and then let's think about your legacy, because those are different. You got, you know, no one wants the two buses on the Friday night football team to pass each other because you didn't get it scheduled right. But at the same time, that isn't going to impact deeply kids, and you're doing both. You know, as we talked about this morning, you're doing the technical and adaptive change that needs to happen, and uh, it's so powerful. And, and so whatever we can do at the State Department to enhance that and to keep that process going, we want to be a part of very good. I think that will eventually have an impact on retention. So we're looking forward to watching that, that data as we move forward. And likewise, when we graduated, we were wished well and handed our diploma. And um, some of us reached back to our, our parent institution and some didn't. So at Kansas State, we're putting a real emphasis now on supporting our first year teachers, our early career teachers. So we're, we're called EdCats. Um, I like and, that. Yes, That's really yes. good. Um, and so reaching out, e-newsletters, webinar opportunities. So looking for new ways to partner with districts that hire our alumni and support them, provide that safe place where they can say, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm exhausted after the first week. Is that normal? And they have um, you know, a thousand other wildcats saying, yep, that, that's, that's normal and next week will be better. So providing an encouragement. So you mentioned Kansas teachers um, um, having a reputation for leaving the state. And I also looked at that data and the number was very skewed and included teachers that had retired and teachers that were deceased and also teachers that left the state all lumped into one big number right. that was, was very, uh, very misleading. I'm a product of Kansas education, taught in Kansas schools and firmly believe in the, the power of public education in Kansas. And, and I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about your leadership and, and what you're bringing to the state. So any final, final words that you want to leave with us? So many thoughts you know, go through my head. As I mentioned, whenever I come to campus, uh, it, it always floods back a lot of memories from my time or, or my daughter's time here. And, you know, whether it's a sporting event, uh, that's a different, you know, memory than when you have when you're in the center of campus. Your leadership is, is invaluable, and I want to thank you and everyone at the Department of Education. You know, I, I'm biased being a K-State grad, but you produce some outstanding teachers, and we have other institutions doing the same thing, uh, down to even our private colleges, which are doing a, a really great job. The support that teachers and principals and superintendents are going to need will continue to grow. And looking for ways that we can utilize technology and we can utilize face-to-face -face and professional development, I think is really critical to that. For them, not only to know that we have support out there, but they are making a difference. Because they are. <laughs> They're making a difference. I was had dinner with an old friend who teaches uh, here in Manhattan. And she was talking about how being re rejuvenated near the end of her career because she was getting to teach some younger kids. She'd now moved to the older seniors, and she was now teaching uh, younger kids and, and, the, and um, very multicultural now, mm -hmm. you know, in Manhattan, mm -hmm. and how much she was enjoying the impact that she was hoping to have on those kids. 
no other profession gets that. You know, maybe physicians a little bit, you know, when they really, but no other profession gets that, and you can't put a value on that. So thank you for the work that you and Kansas State's doing in helping in that mission. Thank you. Impact is what drives us. Impact on children's lives, impact on schools, impact on communities. And so I look, look forward to continuing to work together and improve and strengthen what is a strong system. I do too. Very Thanks, Debbie. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today.